Orthotics in Rehabilitation Lecture Series 1 This lecture contains some definition of terms, different approaches used by occupational therapists in orthotic assessment and intervention, occupational therapy roles, the different objectives of orthosis, and the different categories of orthosis. Many wonder what's the difference between orthotics and orthosis. So let's differentiate them. Orthotics is a science or field of practice pertaining to orthosis. On the other hand, orthosis is a device applied to the body to stabilize or immobilize to address physical impairments or disability. Let me differentiate the terms splint and orthosis. According to the American Society of Hand Therapists, a splint refers to cast and strapping used for reductions of fractures and dislocations. So this term is most commonly used by the physicians. An orthosis is a single device that is rigid or semi-rigid to support or restrict motion of a body part. The terms splint and orthosis are often used synonymously. Splint is a shorter word and it is easier to say. However, for payment purposes, the therapist must use the proper term, which is orthosis. Provision of orthosis is a vital part of occupational therapy for patients with physical dysfunction. Occupational therapists are usually guided by these three approaches when providing orthotic assessment and intervention. The three approaches are biomechanical, rehabilitative, and sensory motor. If the therapist is using biomechanical approach, the orthosis should be able to assist in movement to produce dynamic mobilization. So it could apply kinetic forces to the person's body. If a client wears an orthosis to maximize function in performing ADLs, then the therapist is using rehabilitative approach. If the therapist chooses a sensory motor approach, a specific orthosis may be used to inhibit or reduce tone. What are the roles of occupational therapists? First is to evaluate the need for an orthosis clinically and functionally. Second is to select the most appropriate orthosis. Third is to be able to provide or fabricate the orthosis. Next is to assess the fit of the orthosis. And lastly, is to teach the patient and caregivers the purpose, care, and the use of the orthosis. The objectives of the use of an orthosis is to be able to protect the joint. That means you want to immobilize the joint, preventing any motion, and promoting alternative alignment of joint. Or block the motion at a certain point, restricting the range of motion. An orthosis could also be used to assist, that means to aid in movement of joints during functional activities. Or it could correct joint contractures or subluxations. There are different categories and classifications of orthosis. We have non-articular, static orthosis, static motion blocking, serial static, static progressive, dynamic motion blocking, dynamic traction, and thinodesis orthosis. The first category is the non-articular orthosis. So from the name itself, it does not cross any joints. It only protects or corrects a body segment or bone, just like the pictures below. So the first picture is a circumferential non-articular humerus stabilizing orthosis. The second one is the circumferential non-articular ulna stabilizing orthosis. And the third picture is the non-articular scar controlling face mask. The second category is the static orthosis. It has no moving parts. It immobilizes one or more joints. It prevents contracture, rest injured or inflamed tissues, and it reduces muscle tone. No adjustments will be done in this type of orthosis. The first picture is the volar forearm-based static thumb hole wrist orthosis. The second picture is the posterior static knee orthosis. 
And the last picture is the volar, forearm-based static, wrist hand orthosis. The next category is the static motion blocking orthosis. This type of orthosis permits full motion in one direction but limit opposite direction. For instance, in the figure of 8 finger base orthosis, the upper PIP is extended to the limit of extension block, however, the lower PIP flexion is unrestricted. Another example is with this elbow flexion blocking orthosis, wherein the elbow is free to extend out of the orthosis. The next category is the serial static orthosis. Same with the static orthosis, it also immobilizes one or more joints, it reduces spasticity and correct contractures. The only difference is that this type of orthosis is being remolded as the range of motion increases. It is reduced by series, so there are adjustments involved. The perfect example is the anterior serial static elbow corrective extension orthosis wherein the orthosis is adjusted towards elbow extension until the flexion contracture completely resolved. The next category is static progressive orthosis. This is almost the same with the serial static. However, the non-elastic component attached to the thermoplastic base is the one being adjusted by small increments as the contracture is reduced. Components such as turn buckle, hook and loop velcro, nylon line, adjustable hinge, or a screw. For these two splints, the hinges and screws can be adjusted in small increments as the contracture reduces. Dynamic motion blocking orthosis. It has motion blocking component wherein it applies passive pulling force in one direction while permitting active movement in opposite direction up to the limit of the blocking component. This orthosis is commonly given for patients with tendon injuries, wherein the IP joints can extend against the resistance of the elastic tread to the limit of the extension block over the fingers. The next category is the dynamic traction orthosis. It has thermoplastic base with a hinged out trigger. It permits a full active range of motion of the target joint while applying a conscious distraction force to the joint. This is an example of a modified dynamic traction splint for unstable intraarticular fractures of the PIP joint. Lastly is the tenodesis orthosis. This is a pseudodynamic orthosis wherein it uses active wrist extension to bring about passive flexion of the MCPs and IPs. That's the end of it. Please like and subscribe. Thank you!